Thank you very much to EA for inviting me to this early access event which allowed me to play Season 11 of Apex Legends early and this is what I saw. Uh, yeah, now's, now's a good time for me to tell you that my name's Ragtank, the greatest gutter tier gamer on the face of this earth, and when I played Season 11 early, most of my opponents were streamers or other content creators, and let's just say they were a lot better at this game than I am. However, I do have a small tale where I survived a bit longer than 10 seconds, but let's get started with everything you need to know about Season 11, beginning with some of the cool stuff. Here she is, allow me to introduce you to Ash, the incisive in incisors, incisive, oh, wait. Incisive. Instigator. What a description for a legend who seems actually less of an instigator and more of an ender of lives. The passive, I didn't actually get much of a chance to try out because of, well, you know. However, her tactical seems like a lot of fun and when you throw out your arc snare, you can watch it fly to infinity and beyond until it hits someone or you lose the game. Tethers the enemy into a circle that they can run out of, but not without an extreme crippling of their movement, giving Ash and her teammates time to drill their leashed victim. Worth noting though that the arc star does have its limits and it will bounce off of objects such as Gibby's dome. I will hopefully show you an example of her tactical in-game once we get to the action, but before that, here's something else, the phase breach. You Line up with that little marker there and it slices open a tear in the fabric of reality, providing a one-way portal that you will instantly go through once you've slashed it open with your interdimensional sword. You can't slash and wait to enter it later, so it seems great for super aggressive plays or setting up a trap for your enemies to land into. Not that I, I condone such terrible behaviour that I totally won't be making a, a video on in season 11. <laughs> but the time available to make use of the ultimate is short, probably aimed at squashing those Ash Revenant full send teams from capitalizing on two portal uses, although it is still possible if you get sent back to the totem early. Few other things to mention now that the triple take is now back on the ground with energy ammo and as a marksman gun there'll be no more sniper scopes, however it is still every bit as broken as it was in the care package so we'll have to see how that goes. Replacing the triple take in the care package though is the scout with a minimal recoil double tap and guys that is nasty damage to get hit by so expect me to be crying you free flowing rivers about getting double headshot and being robbed of an otherwise perfectly mediocre game. New little hop up for the Mastiff in the 30-30 called Dual Shell and it loads two rounds at a time pretty good so now you can get more 11 damage shots off than ever before. We're almost there the new SMG is the car capable of firing both light and heavy ammo and making use of either a light or a heavy mag that still allows you to use the two ammo types to their full extended round effect meaning that if you dump a level 3 light mag in and find yourself with a 27 bullets that's 27 heavy or light because well the car doesn't care what the mag is only thing is that when you swap between the two ammo types you will need to reload the fresh rounds into the gun every single time even if they're fully reloaded it doesn't matter it's not a case of unloading without a pause it would be disgusting and the devs would be drinking mugs of our salty tears for the next six months now the fire rate of the car it feels kind of strange it's a little bit like the re45 but i'd say a tad slower with a little bit more usable range it's not a gun i would take to the end game but it's something i'd use as a way of hoarding the attachments I'd like for later on once I get myself an R99. The damage, it's not all that bad for this gun, not at all. That's definitely halfway decent, but I would say utility is the reason that the car exists because it gives you plenty of options and less chance of running out of ammo while you're on the open plains of the beautiful new map early on. What else? Oh yeah, Watson. Well, let's just say you're going to be seeing a lot more of her this season and the fence placement allows you to build the Great Wall of Tesla as her fences are much further apart. The ultimate now lasts forever, but it's got a limit on the shields it can be recharged but your tactical pops real quick while you're near the generator and listen to me a central hub of information when really you're just here to find out about the new map and how i died in it well you've waited long enough let's get on with it all oh, right yeah yeah you took ash so i got our first taste of how it's going to be in launch because everyone in the playtest wanted to pick this legend which meant i didn't actually get to play her much at all a feeling that many of you were going to experience but plenty of time to explore the map and see what it has to offer before worrying about becoming an ash main just yet and besides I was interested in seeing how Watson's fences would hold up, but little did I realise that her fences would be the last thing on my mind once we got to Command Centre, the hot drop for this match, but the real reason I wanted to go there was because it has the longest vertical zipline you have ever seen in your life, and I was determined to find it and ride it. But first, survival. We're already in the next ring. Now we will 
someone here. On me. Right on me. Right on me. I don't have a gun yet. Like. Nope. And help I needed because that blood hand clearly teleported off that ledge right next to me and I didn't know what to do next. I had a havoc and a bow check and no skill with either of them and I was low HP. Look, these animations are going to take some getting used to, guys, right? You're not punching me, I'm... Might be able to go for a res right here? Oh, never mind. I only have a bull check, man. Let's do it. Oh, okay. There's a couple of bugs coming in. Cracked another one. Right here. Press him. Nice. I might revive. Uh oh, pushing up. Oh, so close. Another squad. Oh, nice try. Another squad came level. in. Nice try. GG. And here was me thinking I was coming for a nice, long, relaxing zip ride. But we did finally get one, and it was absolutely glorious. Next game, no surprise, Apex Cup 435 to cash, leaving me with Watson. But this time, I was determined to get some decent loot and make a fight out of it. Until I opened the doors and realized the sandy beaches were all that I ever dreamed of in any game, in any match. This place was too beautiful to fight in. It was paradise and I was loving every minute of it. As I crossed the sandy beaches, I recognized this pod, the little teaser that landed on Olympus. I wanted to stay here forever. Then I remembered, there's tridents here, and there's a big cannon to launch out of, so let's take the trident, put it in the cannon, and into space we can- No, no, we're not going anywhere. Okay, not without a base, we don't- Okay, fine. I am jumping yep, out. Back together as a team, we rode the trident to alert our enemies that we were ready to fight anyone, anywhere, and also in the event that anyone fancied taking the cannon launcher themselves, I left a little present for those enemies, which sadly was not accepted because by the time we got to the next building, our opponents unleashed their plan. Well, I might not be Captain America, but I am Watson, so believe me when I tell you that I can do this all day. Bunkering in seemed to motivate our enemies to invade our territory. Satisfied that I'd finally survived an encounter and lived long enough to loot up, I pulled out the triple take instead of the car, giving me some extra options for future battles at long range. We didn't have to wait long though, as the bridge of barometer brought us another opportunity. A seer who was scratching his butt, ready for a wake up call.
There were only two enemy squads left already, and they were in combat. Anyone passes through here? Eliminate the enemy. Finally, we had a chance to win a game, and we decided to bury such silly concepts such as honor or fairness, and decided to go with merciless, shameless, and oh yeah, cannonball! <laughs> With only one squad left, it looked like a solitary ash, but we couldn't be sure. A few more meters and we'll be inside the ring. Thirty seconds to Flying through the phase breach and entering the gates of Jurassic Park to chase our foe, they snuck outside the zone. So I'll let them know that not only were we not interested in an honourable fight, but I'd happily blast them back to the lobby while they decided whether or not they wanted to burn to death. The enemy is here. Wings close by. How could anyone survive this? I was about to die just making it such a short way. Round 4 ring damage must have been cooking their insides out, but this enemy Ash wasn't about to give up, and they made a break for it. Let's go that way. I got another well guys, it wasn't pretty, but it's the only victory I've got for you, right? And as for the identity of that enemy Ash, I actually found out who it was, but in the spirit of keeping things honest and anonymous, I'm not going to be revealing that person's name, so don't even bother asking in the comments. I'm not telling you because it would just come across as petty at this point. So hope you enjoyed that. Oops. Catch you the next one. <laughs> Later.